this video I'm going to be doing a detail strip and reassembly of the Beretta 92FS platform. This also applies to a lot of the clones as long as they have the frame mounted safety here. Now this doesn't necessarily apply to the ones with the uh, decocker only like uh, the new conversion kits or whatever that you can put in here for $55. I haven't done that yet so it's just going to be the classic 92FS or 92F. They're pretty consistent as far as the clones go except for you know as I said the ones with the uh, that don't have the slide mounted safety. If they have a frame mounted safety or something like that it's probably going to be a bit different. Maybe some of the internals are the same but this is a uh, gear song regard from uh, when Zenith was importing pistols and now they switched to basically just roller delayed blowback but one of my favorite uh, pistols pretty durable pretty nice construction but uh, yeah unfortunately uh, you don't really have these around anymore uh, so that's kind of sad that nobody else is taking that over anyways <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get to it so as far as disassembly goes I have loosened up these screws um, these things were on really tight and this one I actually stripped trying to get out a long time ago and I finally was able to get some oil under there and then take out this screw and take the whole grip and uh, spin this whole thing around. Um, so that's a challenge. You want to make sure your screws aren't in too tight um, unless you never plan on taking apart the grip but you have to in order to detail strip it. So first things first, let's go ahead and separate our slide from our frame and there was no magazine in the guns clear obviously so take apart your recoil spring guide rod so you've got these two components and then you got your barrel this is a clone and so it's modeled after the 92F which has the first generation locking block which makes it easy to do this basically you pull out the plunger and the locking block just falls right out my experience with the M9 so the newer generation of uh, Beretta locking blocks won't do this so this is the way this was uh, basically right from the get-go. So there you have that. And all you have to do to take out this uh, plunger, I don't think you'd really be able to upgrade with a modern locking block, especially on this pistol, because the contours of the locking block are a bit different. You can see there's a slanted angle here. This is not something that's consistent with Beretta um, designs as far as I know. So I don't think you're going to have very much luck in just replacing this with a modern locking block. But... The plungers have even changed a bit, so um, yeah, I, I don't know what the likelihood is of you being able to get a um, better, you know, an upgraded plunger into this, but basically you just push out this roll pin, and you'll probably want a small punch, like one of the smallest ones, a roll pin punch, and just punch that out, and then you can take this out, clean it, you know, use a Q-tip and clean that out if you wish. Pretty easy, but not really something I'm going to go over. And that applies to uh, Beretta uh, barrels if you're wanting to replace the locking block set. Replace the plunger and the locking block. So anyways, the first thing I want to get into is just taking off the grips and, and the grip panels at least. And as I said, I loosened these up. So um, these ones were particularly tight. And yeah, I... Uh, wasn't really a fan of having to take these off because I'm going to need to get new screws for this. These are pretty thin panels. Um, so yeah, this stripped one, I had to oil it up a bit to make it really easy. Um, after I took it out initially for this video, just to, so you guys didn't have to see me struggle and possibly strip it more on camera. I mean, this thing is just terrible looking. Yeah. Yep. So, there we go. Alright, so, then just pop that out with middle finger. Set those screws in there. Set that aside. And as you can see, you got internals in here that you need to have access to. So you do have to take off the grip, grip panels. So, I wouldn't be Loctiting these if I were you. Um, just get, uh, like, a piece of rubber band or something and uh, put it around the screws to provide upward tension or provide some sort of tension with the screw but that's just me I've seen that in a couple of other firearms where they have uh, little rubber pieces that provide constant tension that way they don't need to deal with Loctite and it's still easy to take out so pop this thing out as well 
these screws here it doesn't really matter it's not like they're independent screws for you know a specific area or anything okay so now that this is out um, you have the frame exposed and the easiest thing to start with would actually be uh, taking apart the disassembly knot which basically all you do is you rotate up a little bit and there you go you pull it out and then this piece comes right out pretty simple and then set that off to the side and then the button will come out the other end with the spring and if it doesn't come out with the spring itself just you know it might be poking out a little bit or just turn it over and shake it so you have all you have here is the spring and the button and this piece so yeah there you go so I'll set those aside next I'll take out the slide stop or slide release and all I do for that is I actually just rotate up and I pull directly out and then it'll come down and let the spring tension come off just like so and you'll see how the spring tries to stay on the slide stop and there you go so basically it's in it's held on right here and it's a little twirly spring as you can see here pretty simple and we'll do a reassembly in another video actually so you know, just briefing you guys that's the intent here so <clears throat> the next thing would be this side see this little spring here this is for this part that basically disconnects the uh, the trigger from the hammer so it's not going to pull the hammer back so it's going to disconnect it so this little spring provides upward tension to hook it underneath the hammer so we're going to take that spring out by pulling it down and dislocating it basically just like so and you can see the shape of this goes into the trigger bar contour and yeah, pretty rough I'll say this much the Turks sure do know how to make their springs and that's what this spring looks like pretty simple and now now that this is done um, what we can do is we can start uh, pushing out uh, this piece right here and I'm just going to use the little MMP um, little backstrap retainer right here it works pretty good as a punch and what you are going to have to do before you even do this is uh, take out the trigger bar which is this whole thing and that's going to basically uh, take off the tension of the trigger return spring down here and then you're going to be good to go to uh, punch it out with this right here this one is really tight it's like they painted it into it so usually these things come out pretty easily but this one's actually giving me a little bit of a problem so I'm going to have to probably encourage it a little wow oh this is interesting just not wanting to go so it hinges off of this so oh man yeah this thing's stuck crazy so anyways I'll go ahead and uh, get back to you when I free this thing up okay so that was a big pain in the ass uh, here's the piece right here as you can see it has a stopper on one side and then it's slim on the other this thing felt like it was fit to be exactly the size of this hole and maybe that's just the finish they put on there but you can see I have a punch holding everything you can see down there you have the let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit you have the trigger return spring that goes through this hole right here where the punch is and then I put the trigger bar back in to show you how it hooks on you have a hooked part or a rounded part that hooks on and then you have another hook part so it doesn't really matter which way it goes in for the most part so 
you know, it can go in either way for the trigger return spring. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out. And you can see the trigger return spring just flew out. And you can see both sides look pretty much the same. So there you go. You got the trigger return spring. One is a little bit um, more flat than the other. I would do the more flat part up against the uh, frame. And uh, I got this one that's a little more rounded. That would go to, onto the trigger bar right here as it goes through. We'll touch on that in reassembly though. So put that to the side and now I'll go ahead and zoom out a bit. And we got our little pin and put that punch back. Take out the trigger bar again and I gotta take out the spring as well. So just pull that thing out. And now the trigger can come out. You can go out the top and much easier in disassembly than it is in reassembly. And there you go. And this is an area that gets a lot of crap on it. So usually wipe these things down. And then when you reassemble them, give a light uh, film of oil and it'll make it nice and smooth. But again, we'll touch on that in reassembly. So I'll set that apart. And next we have the... Uh, the hammer spring, which you have a little pin in here, so I think this one will fit. This isn't exactly, as far as I know, this isn't exactly designed to be a punch, but it has always worked well for me, uh, conveniently. So, so I use it. If it works, it works. There we go. So, when you this is going to be under good amount of tension. Make sure your trigger or your hammer is all the way forward. And mine is all the way forward. And then use your thumb to press down on the lanyard loop. And then easily pull it out. And then ease, it, ease this piece forward. And, you know, as with a lot of clones, they actually have steel. So you got that cover right there. And then the hammer spring. Again, the Turks really do know how to make uh, pretty strong springs for the most part. So this hammer spring is going to be a pretty good long piece. You can get in a D spring, put it in, and uh, you can have a lighter trigger pull. So next thing after this is I'll just go ahead and punch out the hammer pin, which is right here. And oh my gosh, what is going on here? I don't know why this is doing this, but it looks like I'm going to have to actually punch this one out too. So, might as well bring you guys along to see what a pain in the butt this can be for me. So, yeah, this isn't the oversized pin like it is on the 92FS, where it prevents the slide from coming back at the shooter if the, if the locking block or the slide breaks. My gosh. Yep. yep. This oversized this oversized piece is uh, going to be the death of me. Or this uh, this piece is going to be the death of me. So, uh, man. This ain't going to work. I'm going to have to use this. This is kind of blunt tip but you know it's metal on metal it shouldn't be compromised too much oh Durr. hitting my own hand here ah yeah I'm having to work around the camera so this isn't exactly the easiest thing to do but this pin should be coming out I'm sorry guys I'm gonna have to take everything else out so we'll go ahead and move on and take everything else out and then I'll pound this thing out. So anyways, um, this thing is right now caught on the sear, so if I push this piece forward right here, this is the sear, and it hooks on a piece of the hammer, and that's what gives you your nice single action trigger pull. So anyways, um, that's also what uh, locks it in half cock. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and punch out this little pin right here. This is the, this is the pin for uh, not only the sear, but also the sear spring, which is down here in this little channel. You can probably see it right there. So 
I don't think this will be too entertaining for you guys um, because this should go out fairly easily, but these Turks really do know how to make it a challenge for me. And have I completely lost my mind or something? I, I probably have. I probably have by now. Oh my. Yeah, it's like every one of these pins are just designed not to come out, ever. So, yeah. Alright, so, we got a pin right here. It's like I'm having to try to find ones that I can actually pick out. Yay, we got one! We got this top pin right here, and it came out pretty easily. And it, it has a stopper as well. Let's see that. It's got a stopper right at the bottom here. And... There you go. So it goes out from right to left. And this holds on to this part right here, the little uh, decocker and the, uh, not the ejector, but the firing pin uh, safety plunger. So, or safety or whatever, the, the piece that pushes in on the firing pin safety, which is right here. So this is the piece that pushes in on, on this part right here. So it just flips up and pushes in on it. So you got those pieces right there. And yeah, this is um, this is basically tripped by the the uh, trigger bar as it's pulling forward. And this right here is affected by the decocker right here. See how this rolls back and it pushes down? That's pushing down on this part right here, which pushes the sear out of, uh, pushes the sear forward, it pivots like this, and it pushes the sear forward. So when it's in here like this, it's basically pushing that sear forward. As we saw, it'll let the hammer go forward. So that's how that works. Pretty simple. Okay, since that came out, I'm hoping that this piece will come out, and this holds in the ejector. I don't really, this is the only thing this a roll pin really does is hold in the ejector, which you can see it's kind of loose-ish because, you know, this piece isn't in, this pin isn't in. So uh, I don't really think it's too necessary to take it out because all it does is it fits into the left side and then you put a roll pin in. Pretty simple. So now I'm going to have to work on this sear spring <laughs> and the sear to get this thing out because this is going to drive me nuts so anyways uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this out uh, this way and we'll see how it goes but I don't know I'm starting to lose faith in uh, my ability to actually get this thing disassembled with the few tools I have so yeah let's see how it goes Oh my gosh, finally, this this is really a tight pin, and it usually has a little bit of tension on it, but not this friggin' much. Oh, so, when you're taking this out, put some rearward pressure on the sear and the spring, pushing it back that way as you're doing that, and your punch should come out, and there is that sear spring. So... It basically fits in, uh, from what I remember, it fits in like so. Not like this, but like this, as far as I remember. Um, yeah, so, well, actually, no, it, it does go like this, my bad. Uh, so it goes in like so, and yeah, so the springs, or the little uh, arms of the spring closest to the sear, and yeah. So, going something like that instead of something like that. All right. So, then the sear should come right on out, tip it upside down, and this is the sear. This is the piece that catches on the hammer right there on this ledge. And, yeah, this is the little pain in the butt. And... This is the part that uh, the trigger bar, I guess, uh, pulls on single action or what have you. So, yeah, if you give this a good, you know, wipe down, we'll probably see the little wear, uh, wear points on this thing. 
yeah, you can see where the trigger bar makes contact right there, or uh, some of the other other components. And yep, yep, you can see where the um, the hammer rolls on this part right here, and then it catches right on here. So yeah, it's pretty cool to actually look at the insides of this, and uh, you can see this is where uh, it looks like the trigger bar. Uh, makes contact right on the underside here. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool to see uh, the wear on these things, how much uh, use they get. Yep, this is a very good action carried on to the PX4 and the Cougar or whatever, or the Cougar and then the PX4. So, yep, and this is where the top of this uh, sear spring sits. So, when it's in properly, it sits against here and just like that and putting you know rearward pressure to push it uh, rearward back into the uh, back into the frame so there we go that's out now let me go ahead and see if I can get this hammer spring or hammer pin out this thing is oh being a pain in the butt Okay, so I've made a little bit of headway, and you can see it's starting to poke out here. So let's see if I can go the rest of the way. I had to hammer this thing relatively straight because I bent it. So we'll put it over here again, and for your entertainment to kind of see how it's going. Okay. So, here it is. This thing fits pretty tight. It should make the reassembly uh, pretty interesting uh, and entertaining for all of you folks. And here's the hammer. Pin hammer. This is what the, uh, the hammer pin actually looked like before they did the oversized ones where it, it crept up in here to prevent the slide from going back into the shooter's face. And notice this doesn't have the cutout either, so it's closer to a 92F. Nomenclature is not much different, so yeah, just know that if you're taking apart a Breda, it'll probably be a lot easier to disassemble. Anyways, these are two components, pretty easy to identify, especially if you have a Breda, you're just going to have a big saucer on one side. So, there we go. And no, I'm not taking out the ejector. However, I will take out the magazine release. All you have to do is push forward and, I believe, uh, push in, push back a little bit, and I don't remember how... Exactly, I got this thing flipped out of position. There we go. So I pushed from the other side and then out like that. So I pushed in and out. And there you got the magazine release. And, or the magazine catch and release. So basically all you do to f turn it around is to flip it and do the reverse of what I just did. And yeah, you basically go in like this and then you push back and then you push forward again to get the magazine release to be on a left side or a left handed uh, magazine release which would probably help the reloads a little bit for those of us with smaller hands so you just use like your middle finger to uh, basically release the magazine instead but you have two you have one strong spring and two little pieces that hook in right here so you just push in these and pull it out and it separates. I'm not really going to need to do that um, for myself because I'm pretty happy with the way it's assembled but that's basically what it looks like those little pieces and uh, yeah so anyways I'm going to go ahead and set that aside and our friend's pretty much you know completely disassembled except for the ejector so pretty simple eh? Alright so let's go ahead and move on to the frame or the slide not the frame we just did the frame let's move on from the frame to the slide so now we have the slide first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the decockers and we're going to have to do that by pushing out this pin for the firing pin safety 
and this pin for the extractor. And I have a feeling that this is going to be very tough. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get to it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to punch out this roll pin for the firing pin safety. It holds this into place in here. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and work on now. Hopefully this isn't too tight. It seems like this roll pin is just the right size. This is like the smallest one I have. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. All right. So there's that. All right. So have this little roll pin right here. I'm liking roll pins on these Turkish pistols because it seems like these are the only ones that come out easy. So, all right. So just cover that up and all of it fell out. So what do we got here? We got the firing pin block right here. This is the piece that goes up top and pushes from the top. It exposes itself and this is the part that gets pushed. So from the inside. All right, so set that aside. And then what else do we got here? All right, so then we got uh, this piece right here, which goes to something else. And we got the spring. We got the spring for the firing pin safety right here. And just goes into this little indent and this is an upside down version but you got another little spring right here this is what provides the downward tension pretty simple all right so next thing i assume this is actually going to be pretty tough to do but i'm going to punch out this piece that holds the extractor into place and i'm going to have to attack it from this angle right here so this should be somewhat interesting so i'm going to place it like so you can get these at like Cabela's or Sportsman's or something like that. So I don't think this one will do it. I think this is too big, but I'll go ahead and use this roll pin punch. Yeah, this is about the right size. So we'll see if this works. I'm going to do stainless steel. Oh my, ow. So yeah, as I figured, this is going to be very tough to do. So again, I have to spare myself uh, some embarrassment and you know wait until I get this thing going. Now. Okay, so I was able to get this thing going, as you can see here, and this is what it took. This is a broken off screwdriver that I ended up uh, turning into a little punch, and this handle was all the way up to here, and. As you can see, I broke it all around. So, yeah, I had to use the stainless steel piece right here and really slam it in. Um, didn't want to actually break any of my good punches or real punches, I guess you could say. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get this out the rest of the way, and I'll just dangle it over the edge here in order to give it enough space to come out. That ain't going to fit. That's too big. All right. And that's not going to fit. All right. So what will, no, nope, two are pretty much the same size, so let's see about this one, just right, all right, nope, oh, yeah. This really is not fun. And as you can see, this part, this can only go in one way, as you can see here. It, uh, it's bigger on this side, so this thing is definitely fit, like, exactly the size it needs to be in order to get this thing out. So, yeah, this is uh, pretty, pretty entertaining for you guys, I bet, watching me do this. Oh. 
And since this is really tight and it's giving me some trouble, it's just enough to let the extractor out. And here's the extractor. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lube it up uh, a little bit and let that just fall in there. And you know, hopefully when I decide to drive this out completely, it'll give me less issues. So here's the extractor and the spring actually fell down here. So there we go. So here's the spring for the extractor and the extractor itself. And uh, yeah, there we go. So I believe they're interchangeable with Beretta extractors. I'm not too sure, but uh, I'd imagine so. Look how ugly that is. So I'll go ahead and wipe this down. Oh my, this is really kicked on there. Yep, this is the first time I've actually taken this one out because this pin was so hard to press out. That's why I kind of knew this one was going to be difficult because I tried it before. Just took the slide off and tried to punch this out so I could clean out underneath the extractor. And yep, that's when I knew this was going to be a bit of a pain, but yep. All right, so that's what this thing looks like, all worn and um, used. Um, yeah, got a good amount of stuff on there, even the little indicators, nice and covered. This is like the first thing to get all caked up. So behind the hook there, or the claw of the extractor, looking pretty good. No chips, no nicks, anything like that, so it's in good condition. And then the tiny strong spring. And here's where it's... Here's the inside, and you can see the firing pin here with the spring. So I'm going to shove a paper towel in there, clear it out a little bit. So basically, the extractor also, uh, it can kind of, uh, it, if it were a little bit uh, shorter, it would probably act as a firing pin stop. Uh, it can also prevent it from coming out. That's why the extractor has to come out before the firing pin does because this little piece goes into this little indent in the firing pin right here and it, it'll prevent it from coming out. That's why the extractor has to come out and the firing pin uh, block as well. Not necessarily a firing pin block uh, from what I remember but definitely the extractor does because this piece goes into this little indent and it'll prevent it from coming out. Which may not be an issue if all you're doing is taking out the decocker and uh, replacing it or something like that but now we get to move on to the decocker. So this one is pretty easy. You just need the tiniest punch you can find, which would be this little guy, which is starting to bend. And I would go from, uh, basically, uh, you can go from bottom to top, or uh, which I would actually recommend because these channels right here, you can see these two channels, kind of call that a clue. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, punch these out and I'll see if I can zoom in to give you guys an idea, but anyways, I'll go ahead and switch it this way, but sorry the lighting isn't the best in this area so There we go and it with the decocker down all the way I believe Berettas are a little bit different where you have to kind of balance where the decocker is in position or at least the PX4 was that way, but this shouldn't require too much harsh tapping so should just be able to you know, tap them out gently. Yeah, being a Turkish pistol, as long as it's a roll pin, I'm in the clear, it seems. So then I gotta get this out. <laughs> there we go. And there's uh, one roll pin in there. Yep, it's a tiny little roll pin. And then do the other. Yeah, all the way down is the way to get it out. Oh, no, kind of offset. There we go. Alright, so both of the tiny roll pins are out now. So you can see them right there. They're just tiny little guys and take out these little punches and pull these out one at a time. Yeah, I was punching it out against wood, so, yep, got little wood shavings everywhere. That's nice. Good job, dum-dum. All right, so 
Yep, these are the tiny little roll pins and the tiny little punch. So there we go. Now we'll go ahead and zoom out and I'll show you the uh, basically the process of taking this thing out. Put it over here with all the other parts and pieces. This is just like a pile of crap right now. I don't know if let me go ahead and show you guys that. Just a pile of crap, right? <laughs> but I, I know this uh, this system pretty well, so I can just pull out all the parts and be like, okay, I know what that is. So I'll go ahead and lay it out in the reassembly video and at the end of this video to show you guys. But anyways, now that it's out, you can still operate it a little bit, but you take out this little metal sleeve. That's all it is, is a stamp uh, piece of metal right here and with the holes for the punch. So yeah, there you go. You got your right hand only, or right hander only uh, decocker. <laughs> because that's basically all this thing does is hold this into place. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and take this thing out, which basically you'll want to provide leftward pressure. So left side of the slide, right side of the slide, push to the left on this part right here while you're flipping up. And I would caution you to put your index finger or something right here. So you're gonna push up like this, see it hyperextends a little bit, and then you basically are gonna to want to gently push this in so that this thing can rotate a little bit more. And be very careful when you do this. There you go, just enough to where you can start doing the full rotation and I can do a little bit more, actually. There we go. Whoa. Yeah, that was very sensitive. So basically the spring and the plunger, um, there we go. So the spring and the plunger that goes into here, this little hole, yeah, it just shot right out. So, yeah. And now you have this exposed too. This little piece could have shot out too. So. This can uh, basically fall apart. Some people would actually put this in a Ziploc bag while they're actually, uh, uh, like a gallon Ziploc bag while they're manipulating that to catch all the pieces. And that's not actually a bad idea, but I typically fully encapsulate this whole thing while I'm doing this. I have my hand over it like this. So if both of these shoot out and they're cupped by my hand and I have it way in on the table, so it's not actually gonna like come out <clears throat> and uh, shoot across the room or anything like that. I've had that happen before and it took a long time to find all the components. So this is the plunger and spring for the left side and this is for the right side. So the main difference here is this is bigger, this is smaller. This is a, a little more flat on the head right here than this one. This one goes right on here. This is your main you know, a piece under tension. And this is what gives it the little bit of uh, snap to it. It goes in this little uh, area right here. So when this is actually installed, you can actually see it protruding down here a bit um, when it's actually in the fire position. So this little piece provides upward tension right here against uh, this part right here. So when you're flipping it down, it provides extra tension on this side. So that's that. That's these two little pieces and their little springs. So we'll set those aside and now we'll continue to take this thing out. So we'll pull it out more and there we go. So all this is is a free floating plunger and then the firing pin shoots out because there's no firing pin block. So the free floating plunger that uh, has to be struck so it's like a striker on the firing pin spring. So this is the little piece that rotates out of the way. That This is the piece that you see out of the back here. And uh, when you decock it, you decock this way, it rotates out of the way. So there's nothing for the hammer to hit that would make the firing pin go off. So here's the firing pin and its spring. Ooh, this thing is dirty. I can tell because it's not falling out freely. And at least the channel is. I'm going to have to Q-tip that out. But here's the little spring for the firing pin. And this is what prevents, you know, any kind of uh, drop safety issues. This is the end in that the extractor goes into that will prevent it from going out. Very secure system. This is what the firing pin block holds. And we'll just bring that back out here. So the firing pin block goes in like so. And... Basically, when you push up on it, 
it, it holds down like this. The thicker part goes right here, so it can only go, you know, about this far. But then when you push up on it to fire, it, it can actually go into this channel right here. So it can go just like that. So, yeah, that's basically how it works in a nutshell. It's a pretty simple component, but, yeah, it's not too hard to understand. So, <clears throat> anyways, um, yeah, th this is the little piece that gets struck by the plunger in here. So, yeah, pretty broad piece that strikes the firing pin like so, and the inertia itself is able to overcome everything and hit the, hit the primer. So, that is that, and you can also take out the side, but take out the plunger, it just comes out the front side. So, then you can wipe everything down, and if you want to take out the sight, you just tap it out. So, anyways, that's the frame, or the slide, <laughs> uh, all disassembled and everything. So, also, another thing to note, this little piece that goes into the right-hand side, this is also the piece that pushes down on the trigger bar back here and disconnects it. So that's why the trigger goes dead. Like there's no tension on it or anything. It's not locked. It just freely floats. That's because this thing has no contact with the hammer. So that's basically how it works. It's pretty simple. And uh, as you'll see here, if I put this right back in here, you push down on this and it exposes. It gets exposed and that's how you know. See which one fits. Have fun with that. So, anyways, that is uh, the pistol all disassembled, and I'll go ahead and lay out all the components so you can kind of see um, what all is what. Okay, so it's a bit of a jumbled mess, but here you have everything from the hammer, the, the hammer spring, hammer, you know, hammer rod spring. Okay, so I have everything separated out, you know, everything for the slide, everything for the frame. So the grips, the slide stop, the slide stop spring, the little disassembly lever right here, which should probably go over here with the little button for the disassembly lever and its spring. So then you have, let's see here, you have the trigger return spring with the trigger and the little pin that holds it in, the little trigger bar with its little spring, the little uh, uh, decocker lever, a uh, little piece that decocks the the pistol, and also the firing pin block uh, uh, piece right here that disengages it, and the little pin that goes across the magazine uh, release, or magazine catch, if you will, and the hammer, the hammer spring, the hammer spring strut, the cap, and the roll pin, and also the little uh, the pin there so that's basically it and of course you have the grips and for the slide come over here and you can see everything for the slide you got the extractor with its spring the firing pin with its spring the two little pieces for the decocker that give it its uh, little snap in tension right there the firing pin block with its spring over here and also you have the little pin that holds it in the little roll pin the decocking levers and the plunger and their tiny little roll pins right there. So, in a nutshell, it's not really that much. Uh, you just gotta know where everything goes, and each spring is unique, so if you have problems finding everything, uh, uh, if you look on the video, you can see that each spring basically has its own size, and it's really not that complicated. So, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video, which is gonna be on reassembling this baby.